By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the finals, the grand finals of the Hill Giant Cup in Hilversum, the Netherlands. You've watched all the matches here, starting from the Swiss rounds all the way up to this moment, the finals. If you've missed anything, please check out the description below because there you will find a link to the playlist. And in this finals, we're seeing Edo, who's on blue white. He's playing Lion Tax, and he's taking on Ron, who's playing a beautiful reanimator deck. So this is very, very exciting. These are the finals. Now, before I start with the matches and the deck techs, I would just like to point out that as always, you can choose what you want to see first and how you want to navigate through this video. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you can find several timestamps. One of these timestamps reads MTG games. Click on that and you'll go directly to the matches. You can also find timestamps. Uh, going directly to the specific deck deck. So for example, if you want to see the deck deck of Ron, check out Reanimator deck deck and click on that timestamp. Okay, now that you're fully informed about everything, I am going to continue here with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Edo Alliant Tex. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Edo Alliant Tex, so named after the Savannah Alliance and the two land taxes in the deck. And it is a blue and white deck, and it's not as controlling as you may expect from a blue and white. There are, of course, control elements in here, but I think it's really an aggressive mid-range deck as well. I mean, look at all those creatures. We've got four Savannah Alliance, four Suchis, four Serendips, two Sarah Angels. So it really has a lot of beef, so 14 creatures. And then, of course, we've got the four Mistress Factories as well, and they kind of count as creatures also. So just a lot of ways for Edo to deal damage here. And I'm not surprised to see this deck do so well here at the Hill Giant Cup. It's looking really, really strong. And then, of course, we have the blue power cards, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk. We don't have a Time Twister in here. I don't think it's really necessary. We don't have a lot of counter magic in the deck. We only have one Mana Drain. So he's really not choosing to go for that counter uh, strategy, but he does pack the one Mana Drain, of course, the best counter spell in old school magic, probably. And then when we look at the white package, you know, we see the full control suite here in the deck, right? Right. We see Disenchant, Swords to Plowshares, and actually an extra Divine Offering as well. So he's playing four Disenchants and a Divine Offering. That's quite interesting. Most people choose to play with three Disenchants and one Divine Offering, perhaps then an extra Divine Offering in the sideboard, or Disenchant for that matter. But Edo really went heavy on the uh, the Disenchants and the Divine Offerings, right? So he's uh, booked five slots in for those cards. That's quite a lot. Um, we also see the full playset of Swords, like I said before. Of course, we have that single balance. It's just... Too good not to play, you know, when you're in white. It's it's so incredibly good. And then we've got this interesting portion of the deck uh, where Edo is playing with two land taxes and two Armageddon. So kind of a mini tax strategy package. Of course, Armageddon and land tax is great synergy. Land tax and enchantment from Legends for one white. It's just an amazing enchantment. During your upkeep, if you have less lands than your opponent, you can look up three lands, three basic lands, that is, uh, from your library, show them to your opponent, and put them into your hand. So that's, of course, insane. And it works really well with Armageddon. Armageddon, of course, destroys all lands. So that means you destroy all the lands, you pass the turn, your opponent will probably play out a land because, hey, you got to play some spells, right? And that means you're activating your own, you, your tax gets activated uh, by your opponent. And that's actually what you want to happen. And also looking at this deck, I think uh, Armageddon is really good in this deck because there are just so many creatures. So there, there, there's bound to be a moment in the game where you have better superior creatures than your opponent. And that's the moment to kind of slam that Armageddon on the table, destroy all the lands because, hey, you're winning. You're ahead of the game with, with your creatures. And talking about creatures, I think Time Walk, of course, a super good card. But in a creature-heavy deck like this, it even gets better. So like I said, I'm not surprised to see this deck doing so well here at the Hill Giant Cup. And here we see the reanimator deck of Ron. Now, these decks have really been gaining popularity. I mean, they've been getting top finishes, including at this tournament two years ago, Anna won the Often Troll Cup with his reanimator deck. So these decks are doing really, really well. The thing is, you have to have the right collection to build this. I mean, look at the beautiful cards here and maybe focus first on the two key cards in a reanimator deck. So the first key card here is Bazaar of Baghdad and Ron is of course playing a full playset. This land from Arabian Nights, you can tap it to draw two cards 
and then you immediately have to discard three cards. So what you want to do in Reanimator is you want to uh, put all your big creatures in your graveyard as fast as you can. And when we look at the list, we see a lot of big creatures, right? Four Mahamotis, four Trikes, four Sheevans, a single Soul Canard, a Swamp King. So you want to get all those creatures into your graveyard and then reanimate them. So they, there are four animate deaths in here, but an even cooler way of reanimating them is by using All Hallows Eve. And All Hallows Eve, it's just this weird card because it's got scream counters. Let me just read it to you. So it's two black and two to cast for the sorcery from Legends that reads exile All Hallows Eve with two scream counters on it. So you play it, it's exiled immediately. At the beginning of your upkeep, if All Hallows Eve is exiled with a counter on it, remove a counter. If there are no more scream counters on it, Put it into your graveyard and each player returns all creature cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. So all the all the cards that you've discarded with Bazaar of Baghdad now come back into, uh, into play. So that's basically how the deck works. And then around the deck you put all the usual suspects, right? All those restricted cards like Balance, like Regrove, like Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune also a great card because again you discard your entire hand, draw seven new ones. Probably there will be some big creatures in your graveyard and then you can cast your All Hallows Eve if you found that with your new hand, of course. Or maybe just an anime dead, but hey, an anime dead on a Sheevan or, or a Mahamoti is also fantastic value, of course. And then we see also the Moxon, the Power 9. So it's really kind of that reanimator shell and then around that you have, of course, the, uh, the power cards and the restricted cards to make the deck work even better. Okay, and this was the deck of Ron, and we've already looked at the deck of Edo, and that means one thing and one thing alone. We are ready for the finals of the Hill Giant Cup number four. Get ready for it, because here we go. Game number one, here we go. The finals of the Hill Giant Cup. The winner is the king of the hill of 2023, and we'll also get that beautiful playmat that Edo is currently playing on. You get it for a full year until the next tournament in 2024. And on the left, by the way, we have Edo sitting on blue and white lion uh, tacks. And he's taking on the reanimator deck of Ron, who's playing on the Timmy playmat. And look at that. Ron's taking a mulligan, a double mulligan here, starting with just five cards. Let's see who's on the plate. Looks like it's Ron here, starting with the library, which is unfortunate. Because of that double mulligan, so it only has four cards in hand. There's also a library from Edo, but that one is much better because it's online directly. Seven cards in hand for Edo, of course, after being on the draw. <laughs> Hopefully, Ron can find, for example, an Ancestral Recall to refill his hand. And uh, to get that Loa activation as well. There is Bazaar of Baghdad. Okay, I mean, that's something. So he draws three cards and he immediately has to discard. So, I mean, he draws two cards, by the way, not three. He has to discard three cards. So he doesn't even go up to seven. He's got to make a choice. There. I wanted to pitch the anime that changed his mind, though. Sheevan Dragon Lightning Bolt. What else can he put into the bin? There's the anime dead still. Passing the turn. Looks like a Summer Magic anime dead, by the way. That is pretty awesome. And there the Loa activated by Edo, drawing an extra card from it. So he's got nine in hand, I believe. So perhaps he's got a discard. I mean, the best scenario for him would be to have a Mox as well. Or, of course, a Lion. Actually, Lion is better. You've got some pressure. So Savannah Lion's on the board. It's looking really, really good for Edo. And there's an anime dead. Okay, that's something. Sheevan Dragon. Well, something. That's a Sheevan Dragon, which is pretty big. But... You know, the problem here is that Edo has that active low, so he's probably going to find some answers. He's got seven in hand again, so he can use the library to go to eight. Or I guess now he goes to seven. Ooh, is he going off the library of Alexandria plan? No, he's not. He's got Ancestral Recall. <laughs> I was confused. I'm like, what is he doing? But he's got the recall. Oh, man. And he's drawing so many more cards now than Ron. And remember, he already started with a full hand. Ron had to take the double mulligan. I mean, there's very little chance here of Ron actually winning this game one. And fortunately, fortunately for us, it's just the game one. So we have another game after this one. There's a disenchant on the animate, meaning the Shivan also goes into the graveyard. The attack with the lion, Ron dropping to 18. And I mean, this is really tough for Ron. I mean, how many cards does he still have in hand now? Two or something? Cannot be a lot. Perhaps three. 
He kind of went all in on the Sheevan Dragon, but also he had to. He had no other choice. He's been with his back against the wall from the start of this first game here in the finals. Does he have another animate? He could get the Sheevan back again. Or does he want to use his Bazaar? So he's got three cards in hand. When he uses Bazaar, he draws two cards and has to discard three cards. If, you know, in that draw, let's say it's a perfect draw and he'll find like a Time Twister and a Blue Source, that would be ideal. So he's pitching both Mahamotis and then he needs to pick another card. He's pitching another Bazaar. Okay, so that's pretty decent. Are we going to see another Animate? Okay, we're going to see a, a, a Demonic Tutor. I won't say Wheel of Fortune, but of course that's a Demonic Tutor. And this is pretty good. The problem, of course, here for Ron is that he's now tapped out. So he probably has to wait an entire turn. And he also doesn't have a blue source, I believe. Or is that altered dual land there a volcanic island? Or sorry, an underground sea. It's hard to see, really. So Ron here going through his deck. Because, you know, if you have a blue source, I would go for the Time Twister, because then you also activate your own Loa again. Of course, I don't know what that one card in his hand is. If it is a land and it's a black source, perhaps you could also go for All Hol uh, Hollow's Eve. That would be a really good one, because he's got Sheevan Dragon and a double Mahamoti Jin in the bin. Okay. So there are some options. It all depends, of course, on that one card in hand. So Ron now shuffling up again. He's made his decision. And okay, it's a blue source for an Ancestral Recall that he already had in his hand. And this is a good decision, of course. Because it's something you can do immediately, you know. You, you don't have to wait a whole turn. You get the cards and you have new cards to discard as well to the Bazaar. So you can do a little bit of card selection. <laughs> like in, in, in a perfect scenario, if Ron wants to get back here, he'll find All Hallows Eve. That's so important right now. There's a Surrender Befreed attack for two, so Ron's going to drop to 16. Attack for four is going to animate the factory. That's a good decision, of course, because Ron stepped out, so he can do that risk-free. There is a Mox Ruby. So many riches right now here for Edo. I mean, this is a dream start for him here in the finals of the Hill Giant Cup. Are we going to see a Bazaar activation? Yes, we are. So he's going to draw two cards. Discarding the trike, another Mahamoti. I mean, that graveyard is full of goodies. Let's see what other card he's going to pitch. I really hope, because obviously I want to see this game turn into a real game, because so far it's kind of been Edo dominating the board, of course, with the active Loa. I really hope that, uh, you know, Ron has a land in hand and an All Hallows Eve. They seem to be discussing a few things. I believe Ron still has to discard a card, though, to the Bazaar. He's trying to make a decision here, of course. It is the finals. You want to take your time. You want to make the, the right place. Really, really in the tank here. It looks like he wants to pitch the anime dead. That's what he does. Three cards in hand. Does he have another anime in hand? There's a time walk. Okay, I mean, he's getting somewhere. I think perhaps he's digging for land number four for an All Hallows Eve. Or else you wouldn't pitch the animate. <laughs> There's the land. Okay, now does he have it? That is the big question. Does he have All Hallows Eve? Remember, Edo cannot counter at the moment. Only has that Mox Ruby open. Two cards in hand for Ron. 
I mean, if he has it, he would have played it out already, right? So maybe he doesn't have it. I really wonder what those two cards are. He's still in for some damage next turn. Okay, tapping for All Hallows Eve. There it is. Oh, oh boy. And we've got a game again. I'm really excited about this. There's so many huge creatures there in the bin. I mean, if you're Eidor, you're like, uh-oh. Then again, his hand's absolutely full. He's played out zero swords so far. So I'm sure there's some swords to plowshares in there. First, he's going to swing in for seven. Going to put Ron on seven. Ooh, that's problematic. Is Ron actually going to live long enough to see the All Hallows Eve resolve? Because he's already on seven. Maybe he's going to die before the magic happens. Oh my, oh my. Cracking the Lotus, and oh, there's a Saria. Perhaps Ron will be dead before the All Hallows Eve resolves. He's on seven, and there's 11 points of damage on the board. He needs like a balance. Because even a removal spell doesn't save him here because he needs to get rid of two creatures. He's on seven. There's 11 damage on the board. So if you would play a Swords, for example, on the Sarah Angel, there's still seven damage on the board. Oh, this is really problematic. So he's going to use the Bazaar, of course, to hopefully find one useful card. Let's see what he's found. Maybe right now he's realized that even a removal spell is not going to save him here. Oh, that is a cool one. That is a cool one. Of course, you got to play it out. You have to or else you're dead. I mean, you don't want to because you're going to put your whole graveyard back into your library. But I think you have to do it here, Ron. It's your only ticket out of here. And you got to hope for a miracle. You got to hope for that balance. And of course, then uh, a land that provides a white source for you or a Mox Pearl or something. But uh, wow, 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 wow. I mean, it feels insane to do, but you're going to die. And now Ron has a decision to make. Are you going to keep your, your library untapped because you're going to draw seven? You can use it for an extra card if you cannot find what you're looking for. Then again, I think Ron knows that he needs the balance. That's the only way out. So I think he's going to keep exactly probably that dual land. They're altered dual, so it's hard for me to see what dual land it is. But perhaps this generates white mana. There we go. Oh, 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 what a crazy game one. We do see a balance in hand there for Edo, of course. Not very useful for him, but perhaps he's showing it to say, you know, I had a solution to your All Hallows Eve. But, uh, you know, Ron had to do this. Oh, man, and we, we still got a game. I mean, Ron's with his back against the wall from the start with the double mulligan. Edo starting with the active Loa, but he's doing his best. He's fighting for it. And uh, this game is turning into be pretty entertaining. And remember, it's just game one, though. So if Ada wins this, both players are going to go to their sideboards and we're going to have a game number two and hopefully a game number three as well. And now uh, both players looking at their seven. Ada has his cards in hand. Now Ron has his cards in hand as well. Oh, what an exciting stuff. Let's see what he can do. Can he find a balance? There's his land for turn. There's a Mox. Tapping three, taking a damage. There's a wheel. <laughs> That's insane. That's insane. But I do think it's now the end of the road, actually. Ron still has to take a damage for the City of Brass, by the way. It would be on six right now. But um, I don't think he's going to find. Okay, there's a Lotus. I, I said nothing. Maybe he can find balance, balance. Oh, going to draw three more cards. He's really digging deep, but now he needs a pearl. He's got two blue floating because I still think balance is his only ticket out of here. There's a pearl. Nope, it's not there. Oh, but I have to say, man, Ron, I admire uh, you trying and you kept trying and you tried to stretch the game as long as you could and you really played towards your outs. But yeah, I mean, starting with five in hand, active low of your opponent, it, you know it's going to be really, really tough. 
Uh, but this first game probably gave you some some confidence as well. I mean, your deck was still performing despite that uh, that horrible, horrible start. Okay, both players going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So, of course, uh, Ron on the play after losing that first game, drawing a fresh seven. Let's see if he has to take a mulligan or not. Remember, he started with a double mulligan in game one. Edo keeping his cards, it seems, and so does Ron. Starting here with an Ancestral Recall. And that's not uh, the nice thing about the um, Reanimator deck. You actually want to play that in your own turn so you get that discard step, right? This is ideal for Ron. Starting here with that Ancestral Recall, discarding a Big Fatty in the graveyard. That's what you want to do when you play Reanimator. Here we see a Savannah Lines being played by Edo. This is what Edo wants to do, instant pressure. He's got a lot of creatures in the deck. Potentially next turn he could play a Surrender Befreed for even more damage and pressure. But let's first see if maybe Ron can find an Animate Debt for that Mahamoti Jin. He's got eight cards in hand now. What can he do? What does he want to do, of course? That's also the question. There's a Mox Ruby, I believe. There we go. Does he also have a land drop? <laughs> and there's the land. Okay, there's a City of Brass. Taking a damage here from his own city. Gonna drop to 19. There's a Regrowth on the Ancestral Recall, of course. Gonna play the Recall. Wow, this is this is really great. I mean, this is what Ron wants to do. Drawing tons of cards, discarding the big creatures. This is life. Where we had like his worst start in game one, we now have maybe close to his perfect start here with that Ancestral Recall, Regrove Ancestral, being able to discard some cards in your graveyard. This, this is what you want to do. Okay, playing double mocks. Are we going to see animate? Wow, I mean, it keeps getting better and better and better here. Now it's a 4-6 flyer, turn 2, and look at how much there is on the board for Ron. It's insane. Three mocks and two lands. All he needs now is a Bazaar of Baghdad. There's a Disenchant, though. And that's, of course, the downside of the anime dead. It's the fact that your opponent can Disenchant it, so then all of a sudden they have two answers to your creatures. The creature removal and the enchantment removal. That's one of the things that I like about um, the white card for two white and two. Ah, what's it called again? Resurrection. A sorcery. The problem, of course, of that card is that it has a double white in the casting cost. But the nice thing is it just brings the creature back. There's not an enchantment attached to it like with anime dead. So with anime dead, if you disenchant the animate, the creature also goes back to the graveyard. With resurrection, you don't have that problem because there's no enchantment attached. It's a sorcery. It's a card that sees very little play, by the way. Let's see what Ron can do here. He's thinking about tapping the four. I mean, perhaps he's got All Hallows Eve in hand and he can use that to get the Mahamoti back, but he probably would prefer to get some more big creatures in the graveyard. It really needs a Bazaar of Baghdad, probably, to get that whole discard engine going. I don't think he has another anime dead or else he would have played it already. So tapping four here. Okay, there's All Hallows Eve. I mean, perhaps he's gonna top deck a bazaar and he can start discarding his bigger creatures. Playing out a strip mine. Then the question is, is he gonna strip to kind of slow down Edo? He could go for the Tundra, for example. He's not though, passing the turn. There is another land, another Tundra. Does he have a Surrender? First gonna attack for two here. Gonna put Ron on 15. So again, it's Edo being the aggressor here. And I think that makes sense for Edo. I mean, he needs to try to deal as much damage as he can. And of course, Ron wants to take the game more into the mid late game so he can get those All Hallows Eve activations. He can start getting silly with the Bazaar of Baghdad activations. And this is quite interesting right now, by the way. We see a Chaos Orb on the board, but the All Hallows Eve is not an enchantment. It is actually exiled from the game with two counters on it, and it doesn't resolve until the counters are taken off. So it's not like an enchantment where you could use the Chaos Orb to get rid of it. 
There is a swamp now by Ron. I mean, if you're Ron, you really want to try to get more stuff into your graveyard. On the other side, he's got enough mana now to kind of hard cast his uh, bigger creatures. Sheevan Dragons, Triskelions, Mahamoti Jins, it's all in his deck. I wonder if it's also in his hand. That's the big question. It looked like for a moment that he wanted to tap quite a lot. He doesn't have... Yeah, he does have double red because he's got City. Okay, now he's going to take care of the Tundra, which I understand because then you don't have to worry about counter magic. You know, he's Edo does play with the one mana drain. And there we see a hard cast Mahamoti Jin. And this is looking really good now. Of course, Edo can flip on it, you know. Or, of course, play a Swords. So the Swords is a quick response. It does mean that Ron's going to go up. He's going to go back up to 19. That's kind of nice. There's the attack. Back to 17. And next turn, of course, he's going to get the one Mahamoti back. Swords to Plows here is, of course, a perfect card against a Reanimator deck. Here we see a Brain Geyser, Modest one, just for two. And I think taking care of the Tundra was a really good decision, also because of the counter magic, but also because then Edo couldn't get to five to find the Angel. And now also it's value because Edo couldn't use that extra mana to draw three cards instead of two, and that can be a big difference. Anyway, the All Hallows Eve resolves here. We see Mahamuti Jin getting back onto the battlefield. We do, of course, have that one Chaos Orb. So if Edo doesn't have any um, removal in hand, he could always use the Chaos Orb. And there's a Nevenerals disc, so it's kind of giving the option here to a to Edo, saying, okay, what do you want to get rid of, the Mahamoti or the disc? Edo does have a sword there in hand. So this is interesting. Edo, it looks like it's going to use the swords here on the Mahamoti. That means that Ron's going to go up to 22. There's the attack with the lion, so it's going to go back to 20. There is another lion. And there's a time walk. Okay, that time walk makes all the difference. For a moment there, I wondered why are you playing the line tapping out? Because that would be a perfect disc activation for Ron the next turn. But this time walk, uh, now it makes sense. Now that I see the time walk. An attack here for four. Ron dropping to 16. Disenchant here on the disc. Wow, that is really good for Edo. So this is what white can do so incredibly well, right? It can remove stuff. You've got swords, you've got disenchant, extremely powerful spells. You've got balance, the best cards you can play when you're behind. I mean, white, it, there's a reason so many people play with white in old school. Okay, there's a duel by Ron here. So I'm now trying to identify the duels by looking at the text box, by the way. I think this is a volcanic island. But it could be Ron, could be a bad lance. Ron tapping three, tapping four. Does he have another All Hallows Eve? No, he's got another disc. I do like these discs. Because the deck of Edo is creature heavy, meaning he probably has a lot of, you know, creatures on the board, has to commit, so that makes the disc kind of good. And now Edo has that option to perhaps flip on end step. With the Chaos Orb. He can, of course, wait for that as well. Draw a card. Perhaps he's going to find a disenchant. He can just disenchant the disc. Now, remember, the disc, you cannot respond upon the activation with the disenchant. It's still going to happen. I mean, you can, but it's not going to uh, stop the disc from activating, unlike the Chaos Orb. There we see a balance. Ooh, this is nice. One card in hand only. So this balance is going to take care of both of the lions. Um... It does mean Ron is going to lose a land because he's got four lands. Edo's got three lands and they both have one card in hand. So it's basically a way to get rid of the lions here, which is good. I mean, it's great. And Ron's still being on 15. Looks like he's going to pitch the swamp there. That makes sense. And there's the pass. And I believe at this tournament, by the way, I think I actually played against uh, Ron. Wasn't it the first round, Ron, that we played against each other? I believe it ended up in a draw. And my deck, Timmy Spellbook, does quite well against Reanimator because I have uh, Control Magics. And I also like the slower gameplay. I have some more time to do my thing as well. But it was a very, very cool, cool game, cool match.
And Ron just passing here, by the way. Two cards in hand. Edo also passing. So this is a really exciting game number two. Both players in top deck mode. And we now have that untapped Nevin Earl's disc. There's a pass. Edo not finding any lands. And there's a pass again. So both players kind of filling up their hand. There's a land for Edo of planes. So could consider playing the basic planes. Go up to five mana. And perhaps cast an... Uh, Sarah Angel doesn't play the land, so maybe he's got a uh, Library of Alexandria in hand and he wants to go up to seven. Also, Ron just passing the turn, so both players kind of having a stare down here, trying to wait for the other player to do something. There's the pass. Look at the amount of cards the players have now gathered, I guess, in their hand. They've been just drawing going for a long time. Again, draw, go, draw, go. Okay, there's the activation of the Chaos Orb. So he's kind of saying to to Ron, I'm going to play out creatures next turn because I've, I've got enough in hand and I'm not going to use my orb probably on your disc. And of course, Ron doesn't want to activate the disc because that means he's going to lose all his Moxon. So we're going to see the flip. And it's a hit. Edo really took his time there, but that's understandable. We're in the finals, and this is a very important flip for him. Imagine if he would miss. It would mean the draw and go would continue, because now I'm expecting Edo to just kind of start dumping his creatures onto the board. Also because, I mean, this is the second disc that, that's gone. And um, Ron has also already played out his balance. So look at this. Surrender Pafrit Suchi, seven damage on the board. Okay, there is a red elemental blast coming in from the sideboard, taking care of the surrender. There's a duel and a pass. There's the attack for four. So Ron dropping to 11. Are we going to see more creatures? There's a factory and a pass. Another duel. And I think the problem here, by the way, for... Well, problem. I mean, the thing for Ron is here, we haven't seen a single bazaar. He hasn't had any way of, like, filling up his graveyard. And now he doesn't need to anymore because he's got so much mana, he could just start hard casting his bigger creatures. So he's going to tap. Okay, there's a trike. Just a 4-4 four -four now. There's a Sionic Blast. Oh, that's unfortunate, but Red Elemental Blast, keeping it alive. And this is always like, because obviously Edo's going to probably swing in with the Suchi, exactly offer a trade. Okay, Edo's going to get it. I want to say you don't always want to get the trade. Want to take it, I mean. Because Suchi for Trike always feels, it's kind of a feel bad, you know, when you have to do that. Here's another Suchi hitting the board by Edo, so more pressure. Then again, of course, for Ron, the creature is going to the graveyard, which is not too bad because he's playing Reanimator. Actually, it's what he wants. So I guess the trade for, for Ron is, is not as bad. It's a good trade, actually, when you think about it because he's got Animate Deaths, All Hallows Eves, all that stuff. Taking another look at his hand, passing the turn, though. Oh, no, he wants to see the graveyard. I think he's got Animate Dead. He's trying to figure out what's the best course of action but passing the turn I mean it's looking good for Edo he can swing for six put run on five and remember we're in game two Edo's already won game one so is he going to be the next champion or are we going to see a game number three that's a big question here Nope, that's it. Oh, hello's Eve there, but it's not going to help him. Edo winning here. The Hill John Cup, King of the Hill 2023. And this is his deck. Congratulations, Edo, with your grand victory. The King of the Hill playmat is yours for a full year. Treat it with grand responsibility. Oh, man. Great, great, great finals. Of course, you always hope for, uh, for game number three, but uh, wow. 
This, uh, this has been entertaining and it's been great to see both players and both decks here in action. Thank you for showing your skills right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And that was the episode for today and also the end of the Hill Giant Cup video series because we've reached the finals, of course. But don't worry, don't worry. There are still a lot of games, matches, tournaments to report right here on Timmy Talk. So don't forget to get back uh, here for your weekly dose of old school magic. I've got new matches coming up on Tuesday and on the Fridays, mail day videos and other, other type of videos every single Sunday. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, now that that is out of the way, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video if you want to, of course. All this helps the channel move forward, so I would really, really appreciate it. Talking about moving forward, I also have my own Patreon program where you can become a patron of Timmy Talks. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for more info. And uh, it already starts with $1, I can tell you that. So for $1 a month, you would help me a lot to keep creating this content for you and keep the channel afloat. So please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. When you become a patron, there are some really nice perks attached, including becoming a member of the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.